Lakeland Public Television's Common Ground is brought to you by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund. I started about seven years ago, and I didn't make my own chocolate at the time. You know, I just bought from different companies, and everyone kept saying, do you make your own chocolate? So finally I decided to start doing it, and I taught myself. It's been, this will be the fourth year, and I'm getting pretty comfortable with it. So it's Chocolate International, etc. I, I decided to put the International in there because there were other chocolate, etc. stores around the nation. And so just to be legal and differentiate myself, I put the International in there. Um, I do um, get the chocolate from other parts of the world, so, you know, that helps. Well, these trees are very um, scraggly looking trees and then the fruit comes down and the fruit is about this, you know, they vary in size, but approximately this tall. And they're round shaped like a football. And these trees can only grow under the shade of the rainforest trees. So if the rainforest goes, we don't have chocolate. And then they take, these are, these are called pods, and then they take, open up the pods and there's, um, inside there's like little, Oh, I don't know, it's like a spaghetti squash. And then on the inside, they take out all these little nibs or whatever and dry them out. And then um, normally they're sent to a, a company that makes the chocolate. And the chocolate goes through a process of being ground. And it's ground um, very, very fine. So it gets that real liquidy. That's how we know chocolate as this. And then they're pressed into these either blocks or nibs like this. Okay? And this chocolate is 53% dark. I also use 70% dark. This comes from um, Colombia. The 70% comes from Venezuela that I get. Um, and then I have milk chocolate from Belgium. And they come in blocks, and then I just chop it up. Chocolate exists in different chemical states, just like anything else. Um, it has to be tempered so that when it cools back, it goes up to a certain temp, depending on whether it's white, milk, or dark. And then it goes up to a certain temp, goes down to a lower temp, and then back up to the temperature that you dip at. Um, if it's tempered properly, it'll have a shine to it when it's done. And so when I mold the chocolates or I dip chocolates, then it has a nice shine to it. So this machine does it for me. Otherwise, you can do it in a bowl. In the old world, when they make their, their chocolates, they uh, heat the chocolate up, but they do it either in a microwave or they put it, um, they could do it in the oven or they could um, put it on a heating pad to heat it up to that temperature. It's like 120, you know. Uh, it's not very hot, but you know, that just melts the chocolate and gets it up there so that those crystals break down. And then when you go back down to the cool chocolate, cool temperature, um, you know, then they start realigning and then when you go back up, that's, you know, all, all of the crystals are in the perfect state. So I'm putting in chocolate that's already been tempered and left and then I use it to seed the chocolate that I'm making now. It helps cool down the other chocolate. If you were doing it in a bowl, you would put in a handful of chocolate and that would actually melt right into the bowl of chocolate that you're doing. And then when it's, it, when it's cooled down to the proper temperature, which is about 90, um, then you take what's left out of the bowl. In here, in this machine, I just put it in a separate compartment and it helps cool down that chocolate and then I take it out. And then it'll go back up to the right temperature. Now do the molds first. 
and then I'll do the ganache. Now this is all done and I'm going to take out what I need for the ganache, otherwise I'll have to re-temper it. Okay, so that'll be ready to make ganache. And then the rest, I'll do this mold. It's so quiet when the machine goes off. And then I tap it. bottom. And then I put it back in. And that's the empty shell for the mold. So I'm going to put this in the back room so that it can cool and harden up. Okay, so then the next step is the ganache. So then we just add this to the chocolate. So it's just chocolate and cream makes the ganache. And so I will go really fast. And that is proper. And then I take this out and put it in a pan. And cover it with saran wrap. And let it sit, usually overnight. But then this is the ganache after it's sat. And it's still soft and this is milk chocolate. So then these are pretty easy to roll. And then I take um, the ones that I rolled and use my dipping fork, dip them into the chocolate, and then I put it on my pan. And that would be the chocolate. And voila, truffle. And then this is the cream that I make. I just started making my own creams. I used to buy them all. So I make up a big batch of creams, and then when the mold is ready and it's all set up inside, just put it in here. And then normally I would put these in and let them, um, uh, just let the cream stiffen up so I can cover them with the chocolate. Just push it down in there, and then they're ready to go. So as soon as the chocolate is ready, We'll put the bottom on. So then I'll just let it set up. I make um, several different kinds of milk truffles. I make uh, the milk, the chai, uh, sometimes pistachio, sometimes habanero, Irish cream, and then Italian cocoa. Um, in the dark, I make coffee and raspberry. In the white, I make a champagne, a mocha, and Caribbean rum. And then in the creams, I just started doing those because I had to get um, a mold that I like, which is this one here. This is easy for me to work with. And these molds are $25 each. So it's you know, it's difficult to experiment and <laughs> not put a lot of money into it. But I make maple, butter, uh, creams, coconut creams, lemon creams, cherry, and cherry creams. And then I make turtles. Those are a really big seller. I've started making caramels where they just get rolled up into a wax paper and sell those. Um, I do nut rolls, um, usually in the summertime. And then I do marshmallow squares, peanut butter cups. There's, oh, chocolate covered potato chips. I just can't make enough of them. Yeah, teaching myself to make chocolate was really difficult. But after I get to where it's easy, then I really do enjoy it. At first, you know, I, I have to enjoy it to start it. 
you know, to do this to begin with. I wake up and can't wait to get here. Um, but it's painful, <laughs> you know, just like learning anything. But after, you know, after you learn it, then it's, you know, it's just fun. If you enjoyed this segment of Lakeland Public Television's Common Ground, consider making a contribution at lptv.org. If you have segment ideas pertaining to North Central Minnesota, contact us at legacy at lptv.org. Common Ground is funded by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund by the vote of the people on November 4th, 2008.